In our previous video, I mentioned I'd show you how to hook up a MIDI keyboard to this. We went for the most basic installation startup that we could in the last one. Uh, adding a MIDI keyboard is barely more complicated. What you'll need is a 5-pin MIDI DIN cable. And you'll take your MIDI keyboard and one end goes into the out of the keyboard. The other end goes into the MIDI in on your Behringer. And then, once you power up your keyboard, sorry about that, you should have function right away. Good. Now, let's say you didn't have function right away. First thing to make sure of is that your MIDI keyboard is transmitting on the same channel that your Crave is receiving on. If you go to your quick start guide, you'll see on page 15 you have uh, an explanation of these dip switches. And these refer to the MIDI channel that your Crave expects to be hearing MIDI information on. And so if all of those are set to down, it's listening on channel 1. Those switches are... Here. Okay, so here are your dip switches. 1, 2, 3, 4, and they're all set down right now. So they're all listening to channel 1. If I turned this first one up, They're hard to press. Uh, according to the manual, now this is listening on channel 2. Now if I go back to my keyboard, which is transmitting on channel 1, on a key step it's very easy. I can just hit shift and you see it tells you what MIDI channel you're picking. So right now this is sending on channel 1. And I'm not getting any sound. We know the Crave is working. So, but if I select channel 2, so now it's transmitting on the same channel that this is receiving, is listening on. So I'm going to set this back to channel 1. I'm going to return this to channel 1. And now everything is speaking to each other perfectly fine. The ability to set the MIDI channel is important if you are going to be controlling multiple devices from a single keyboard. Um, so if I had like another synthesizer here, I could be sending signals on channel 1 to this one and signals on channel 2 to another one. Or if you are operating multiple MIDI devices from your computer, so you can set your DAW to transmit signals to this while it sends things on channel 2 to something else, while it sends signals on uh, channel 10 to your drum machine, things like that. But anyway, that's how you can set up the um, hardware USB. Uh, sorry, the hardware MIDI. Next thing I was going to say is this also accepts MIDI over USB. So if you plug this into your computer simply using a USB cable from the USB A out on your computer to the USB B in on this, it will also accept MIDI that way. So you don't have to use. Uh, a DIN cable if you don't have an uh, audio interface that has MIDI in or out. Okay, and just a couple other things about setup that I did not mention last time. When you use the phones jack here, be careful with the volume knob. Uh, I find when I plug in headphones that this knob adds a lot of volume very fast. So I can have it all the way at zero, plug in my headphones, and I can turn it about that much, <laughs> uh, it's a 64th of a turn, I don't know, and suddenly it's loud enough, and anything beyond that is going to hurt your ears. So be careful when using the phones jack. Also, um, try not to have your headphones on when you turn on the power. Uh, you'll hear a loud pop, even if the volume is all the way down to zero. Okay?
And then something else, we talked about having an initial state for your synthesizer. So we, we kind of turn all of our knobs, you know, I'm like, oh, it will turn everything down to zero, set your volume, and turn everything down to zero. All right, so now I can play. Oh, there's no volume. <laughs> this is an easy mistake I've made many times when I, I get a new synthesizer and I'm learning what all the different knobs do if I'm not paying attention. I turn down things that I'm not supposed to turn down. And in this case, I've turned the filter cutoff all the way down. We're going to talk about cutoff in a moment. But if I turn this all the way down, it's cutting off all the sound. So your cutoff knob has to be up. And the other one is the sustain knob. This refers to the level at which your synthesizer holds a pitch, uh, holds a volume. And so if that's all the way down, it's extremely low, you can't hear anything. So we've got to turn that up so that the sound stays. So if you're not getting any sound out of your instrument, make sure that when you set everything back to zero, you didn't turn off the sustain level and you didn't cut off all of the sounds with the filter. Now, let's say you turn on your synthesizer and it's making a sound and it's you can't stop it. <laughs> There's two ways you can deal with that on this instrument too. You don't have to always press a key. There are two ways to make your instrument play without you touching anything. The easiest one is right here, this toggle switch that says VCA mode. Right now it's set to envelope, which is this section. But if I just turn it to on, now it just holds a pitch. It'll hold the last message that it received. Turn that off. It still remembers that I was playing a D flat here. Turn it on. It still remembers the G. The other way that you could do this is press hold on the, synthes on the sequencer section and then press a key. And it will start to play. So, if for some reason uh, the instrument's sounding and you can't figure out why you're not touching anything. Check those two places, that the VCO mode is set to envelope and that you don't have the hold button on.